Welcome, everybody's looking great today. And uh, we want to welcome you. This is the Global Watch International Call. It is January 16th, 6 a.m. No, it's actually 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And we are starting uh, week three. We're at the beginning of week three of the unveiling, which is our special three weeks of prayer that we're doing at the beginning of this calendar year. And week three focuses on the end time call of the watchman. And this hour is actually a second hour of the journey. Uh, the first hour was this last uh, uh, hour that we had that was with David Slyker, a very important but um, very, uh, in some ways, difficult message to receive because it isn't, wasn't all happy and, and, uh, uh, and amazing. It was about how to deal with uh, the coming persecution and what that actually means. Very well worth listening to. But this second hour, uh, in this second hour, my dear wife, Susan, is going to take us through the end time <clears throat> call of the watchman, which the watchmen have three focuses to the call. One is the individual call. The second is the corporate call. And the third is the end time call. And she is going to refresh. For those that don't know, you're going to be hearing it for the first time. But most of us have heard this message to a degree. And, uh, but Susan is gonna remind us of the importance of the end time call. So um, let me bless you, Susan, and then we will uh, open up in prayer and we will go into, uh, we have a worship song before we start. So Father, I just bless my wife in the name of the Lord. I'm just so thankful for my wife of 37 years. And, um, and it just keeps getting better. And it keeps getting better because we keep pressing in uh, to you. Lord, and we that becomes a part of it, it invades our marriage and who we are. And but I just thank you, Lord, that that Susan is more focused than ever on you and um, and won't uh, relent. She is a true watchman who will give you no rest day or night uh, until she sees um, your glory established across the earth. And we just declare that. The best days of your life and your ministry, Susan, are ahead of you and not behind you. We just um, we are we are seeing God's favor over you, but we are just saying that that favor is increasing in these days. And not only is God's favor increasing over you, but His wisdom is increasing. That He is, we, as we have prayed over so many people, but it's just so pertinent that um, uh, Ephesians one that you would have a spirit of wisdom and revelation that you might know Him better. And uh, that you would have renewed strength, <clears throat> that your voice would be um, would uh, not only hold out but improve during this hour, and that um, also that we just declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper, and that the Lord would hide you in the shelter of His wings, that no harm would come to you, no destruction near your tent, and that um, that applies to me also as your husband, who uh, takes incoming from time to time. And uh, uh, and we just declare that that's true over our children, our daughters-in-law, our grandchildren, our provision. And uh, we just declare over you, Susan, no sickness, no accidents, no injuries. <laughs> and um, uh, we just declare that the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. And we are just saying that that's absolutely true of you. And um, may you have... Uh, joy and peace in believing, and may you abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So well, um, I have to say that I, I want to thank you, Fred, for putting up with me all these years. <laughs> that, your no, hardly. It goes the other way. Grace. <laughs> what? Yes. No, it goes the other way, actually. I'm, I, I would never be, I would be out there in the ozone somewhere if it wasn't for you keeping me on track so that's really good oh you're sweet <laughs> anyways so I play the worship song well let's have the world-renowned uh Vic and diane uh, open us up in prayer father we thank you for fred and sue and yes. for all they bring uh, to the global watch and to all the other networks that they're involved in uh, we thank you, Lord, for keeping Sue safe in her Korean trip and keeping Fred alive during that time. Thank you that he didn't starve to death or run out of clean shirts. <laughs> uh, 
and thank you. Lord. It was close. It was close. It was close. <laughs> I guess it might be. Uh, Lord, we just bless Sue. We thank you for her, and we pray that you would release through her all that you have for us in this session today. Mm. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 All right, here we go. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's so good to be back. <laughs> I apologize for my voice. Um, please bear with me. I'll do the best I can. <clears throat> I may have to <clears throat> every now and then. Um, it was uh, an amazing journey to Korea, but they were very long days, 17 to 18 hour days, a few breaks in there. Um, I, I felt like very convicted of our laziness in the Western world. <laughs> but um, it was, uh, uh, I believe, a very productive time. And so I'm here, we're here today to talk about the third, um, the third, third characteristic of the watchman, which is the end time call of the watchman. And I have to say that um, my perspective on the end times has really been um, challenged and encouraged and enlightened over the years that we've been doing the watch. And it's even taken on a new avenue uh, expression recently. And I want to talk about that today more than anything. What I see a shift in the emphasis of the timeline, the end time timeline, which we can all deliberate over. And there, there are many different opinions on it. And I'm not sure I can express them all. Uh, I'm not the expert in that. Um, but from a spiritual standpoint, I feel like there is a challenge now to us as watchmen. We have some foundation of the end times. And, and certainly all of us are alert to the fact that we are in definitely in the birth pangs and they're getting stronger and shorter. And um, so my perspective right now today is to talk about how do we stand in days of adversity, the character challenges that we will be facing in the days ahead. Because um, all of you, I don't want to see any of you want any of you knocked off the wall because of something coming in to hit you from behind or in front of you or beside you. And um, how can we prepare ourselves? And actually, uh, the Bible describes how we can prepare ourselves. And it's very simple. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Matthew 17, 11 talks about... Um, the spirit of Elijah must come first to restore all things. And then Malachi 4, 5, and 6 talks about Elijah coming, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and children to the fathers, lest he strikes the earth with a curse. So there's this name, Elijah, that keeps cropping up for that the hour that we are in. And what does that mean to us? And... <laughs> So I started looking at the story of Elijah, and it's a little bit of an enigma to me because Elijah comes out of nowhere in 1 Kings 17. Most of the people introduced, either kings or prophets before that, they're the son of so-and-so. Are There's a little bit of a lineage, of a family lineage there. But Elijah is not. He comes in as Elijah the Tishbite. And Tishbe is in Jordan. It's a city in Jordan. I believe it's an, a farming area. And um, the first words out of Elijah's mouth is to a king. Now, that doesn't work very well, in my opinion. In our usual walk with the Lord, people earn their right to go to the king to speak a word. <laughs> and Elijah just pops on the screen and speaks this word. <laughs> to a king <laughs> so <clears throat> my point is is that there's history behind this that pushes elijah out front and i believe it's the word of the lord and he comes out of nowhere and how does that apply today i'm telling you each one look at my eyes god's calling you out of nowhere into somewhere <laughs> into his position into his purpose, 
our challenge is to hear the word of the Lord and speak it out. That's the commission I believe that God is taking us today into the end time call of the watchman. Now, we need to work on how do we declare the word of the Lord, and we'll be working on that. Um, there's a team of the prophetic people here uh, that we are working with. Many of you know them. We're going to be going to Israel with them and doing a, a summit with them. I, they're people I trust, but they may not be the most well-known people. None of us are. <clears throat> but I believe it's an Elijah company that God is calling together for such a time as this. And um, we need to get our heads out of the platform into the purpose of God. This is a serious hour. And um, I'm going to challenge us on a few different levels um, at the end here to <clears throat> go beyond our comfort zone in reaching out and connecting with not only the um, our governmental officials, but also the younger generation. It's the time for the Elijah and Elisha companies. Now, um, yesterday was Sunday here uh, <clears throat> in our time zone, and we had the opportunity to speak to some young, young adults. And um, I spoke to them kind of like I'm talking to you now, very honestly. And I told them, look, at, times are going to get tough. I, I, we're not, I'm not coming here with sweet sounding words. I'm coming here with an exhortation to wake up to the hour that we're in. And you know what? They were quiet and they listened. And I gave out some of my books and they were all there in line to get the books and they want more conversation. So my exhortation to all of us is to start talking to our families, our, our children, the children's children, uh, young adults all around us, get them involved with the watch, get them involved with what God is saying to the church in this hour. And this, the second area is our government, where we need to be more involved with our government and um, influencing our government. So <clears throat> I'll say a little bit more about that in just a minute, but I believe that we are in a real shift for the spirit of Elijah is rising amongst us. And I believe all of you carry that. You wouldn't be on this line if it wasn't. So, and what does that mean for us today? <clears throat> I'd like to just open up and hear your thoughts. What does the spirit of Elijah is coming first to restore all things? What does that mean to you guys? Just a few short comments, no, no lectures. What does it mean to you? So what Jesus said. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and raise your hand electronically. That'd probably be the best way to do that. So we're going to do the next five to ten minutes on that. Yeah, just I want to hear what their thoughts are. Okay. And it's not threatening. It's just like, what does it mean? I just try. I'm just trying to provoke our hearts. <laughs> okay. So give the question again. What does the spirit of Elijah mean to you? Okay. Blair, go ahead. So from Matthew 17, 11, Jesus says, this Elijah has already come, okay? And that was John the Baptist. And the message was clear. It was crystal clear. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's the message I believe needs to go forth because in this country, we know people do not fear God. I mentioned it to pastor just, just, just after the sermon yesterday. And he mentions the awe of God. Yeah, but if you don't fear God, you're not going to be saved. That applied to Jesus too, because the fear of God happened when he prayed three times, top of his ministry, people have been healed from the dead. And he prays, God, Father, take this cup mm -hmm. from me. Amen. But not my will, thy will be done. And that's the message. Amen. Thank you, Blair. We want really brief comments here. 
Okay, yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead, Margaret. <laughs> Uh, for me, it means be bold, get out there, and just let the Lord, Holy Spirit lead you, and uh, speak us all, and speak wherever the Lord leads us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Johannes. Yeah, when Elijah um, was living, the people of God were kind of involved in a lot of idolatry with Baal and so forth, and they at the same time worshipped Yahweh, but there was a great mixture, and Elijah stood up and spoke the truth in a very radical way, even with signs and wonders, and he turned the whole people to their God again. Amen. 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 Thank you, Johannes. Um, Molly. To me, Elijah is a man of faith who knew his God and knew the authority and the power of God and did not hesitate to demonstrate who his God was. Mm -hmm. And Amen. to me, Amen. that is the call and the challenge for us as people that we carry that authority, we carry that mantle. Jesus has given it to us and he has given it to us and we are to demonstrate the God of Elijah to the world. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Thank you, Molly. Uh, Denise. Yes, I just posted a uh, YouTube to Global Watch from James Alliteron. He did a, he's done an incredible teaching in several places on the spirit of Jezebel versus the spirit of Elijah. Uh -huh. And um, something that it really awakened me to was that as we know that the spirit of Elijah was, is about boldness. And what Blair even said is that Elijah, we need to look at the very end of Elijah's mantle having to be given away. And it's a warning and a instruction to us to be careful not to hesitate, to not shrink back. So I just share that with you so that we can look at the whole, the whole counsel about Elijah and um, allow that to instruct us as we walk in that spirit. Yeah, and then the not shrinking back is just so, so, I mean, there are many things that are so important, but that is so very important. Thank you, Denise. Yuta. You're, um, we're not hearing you, Yuta. It doesn't look like you're muted, but we can't hear you for some reason. Still can't hear you. Why don't you, why don't you just put it, uh, put it in the chat. Yeah, thank you. All right, Virginia. For me, the spirit of Elijah means fundamentally the healing of the generations. And that really only comes by the, the, the body, the ecclesia, the community growing up in different places. And here in Israel and parts of Israel, not at Kehilata Carmel, there are there are like totally different worlds, the youth in one world. It's like a series of small communities that almost never communicate with each other. So the emphasis is on the healing of the generations to understanding the time that we are in <clears throat> and for the just restoration or catching the vision of the, the body of Christ, of the body of Christ, which is a whole thing. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So good, thank you. Well, it's one of the things, uh, prayer points for the season going forward is for us to have that intergenerational focus. And what I see coming into the kingdom, and at least in our area, possibly in the Western world, is a younger generation that's coming in from broken homes. Um, they're coming in from out of the drug scenes. They're disenfranchised. Many of them don't have a clue what their identity is. Um, they're, they have been fatherless. And um, <clears throat> so they're searching for um, the mothers and the fathers. And I've been awestruck, at least at our church, at the willingness for the next generation to come around as they want us. And like that never happened in my generation. We were the rebellious, you know, 60s, 70s, you know, whatever you want um, <clears throat> to call it, with the Beatles generation, where there was just so much rebellion, and none of our parents were right. 
And the pro the produce from that is now coming out of the streets. And I think that that's a huge place of repentance that I haven't heard a lot of repentance over yet. Uh, um, and, I, and we could maybe spend a session on that in the future of repenting for our generational sins. Um, but the beauty of it is, is God is making beauty out of ashes and calling them now into a fresh hunger and a fresh rigor for the Lord that I've not witnessed yet. And so God is watching over his word to perform it. We are in that Elijah time where there is this um, uh, healing of the nations that's coming in through the generations. So <clears throat> that is um, a, a big part of what I wanted to say today is be looking for this intergenerational community and develop that. And we need to have them on the wall, learning the things that we're learning so that when they face the troubles that they're going to be going into, they have a community of believers to run to and know who to go to. And again, Elijah, Elijah appears on the scene, and yet he's able to speak to Ahab. I can't quite figure that out, except to the fact that he must have earned a reputation of knowing the word of the Lord and speaking it out in the right times, in the appropriate ways and uh, earn that respect that he could go right to Ahab when he appears on the scene. And I also want to say about the spirit of Elijah that it takes the prophetic to a whole new level in the Bible. Uh, we hear little pro prophetic words from, uh, you know, Balaam and Peor and, you know, a few others along the way, but Elijah brings the prophetic into a whole new realm of um, exposure, let's put it that way. And I believe that God is raising up a new prophetic movement in this hour, and that's partly why we will be doing this uh, Spirit of Elijah Summit in Mount Carmel. And I, I, I'm in faith for this. We feel the weight of it, those of us who are, are planning on going and those who are working on, on the ins and outs and developing the uh, foundations for this summit, we feel the heavenly weight of it. And it's not, it, it, we're not trying to elevate ourselves. We're better than you or anything like that. But we're he, he feeling a commission from God that he is wanting to lose this sense of drawing people into a new, fresh release of the prophetic that knows how to operate within a, a church confine and yet knows how to wor work with government and um, draw people to the Lord. So I, there's a fresh wind of the prophetic underfoot, and um, it's, it's drawing uh, the young adults into it, and it's uh, acting in a mature way. It's not, um, I, I don't want to sound uh, accusatory at all, it's it's not superficial. <laughs> and God is training people who have eyes to see and ears to hear who will come alongside and begin to promote that. And I, I commission all of you on this line today as part of that community that God is raising up in this hour to promote and propel his word forward into the nations. And yet build that community across the nation so that when the trumpet sounds, we can hear the trumpet and rally to it. Yeah, so, Susan, let, me, uh, let me just let me just uh, let me just jump in and say that, uh, and I, I mentioned this earlier, but it might have been before we started the uh, the recording. Is that um, the young people are very sensitive to what's real and what's not, yeah. and they're they're uh, they're just not likely at all to listen to hype or listen to somebody that's saying something but it's not it's not real they want they want real they want they want the truth they want the presence of god they're hungry and they're um uh you know broken in many in many ways but um but know that there's something greater and so the part of the the brokenness of so many of them coming from difficult family situations especially 
uh, uh, means that they they are actually looking for spiritual fathers and mothers. That's one thing that they're looking for. But the spiritual fathers and mothers, we have a responsibility to be real with them and to really be following the Lord because they'll listen to us to a point, but they are like everyone else. They, they you know, you listen to somebody to a point, but then you look at their life and you and you 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 follow what you see them doing in their in their lives. And um, it's honestly, when we were speaking with them yesterday, I felt the fear of the Lord come over me that there is a responsibility that we have, that they are hungry, but we need to feed them the truth. We need to feed them love and we need to feed them the truth. Um, just wanted to mention that. Yeah, amen to that. <clears throat> and uh, a lot of you know that recently, um, a few weeks ago, I woke up on a Sunday morning and I heard these words, get ready for the unveiling. I'll, I'll be sending out more of a detailed revelation of what that means, uh, hopefully in the next few days. But um, <clears throat> It's a two-part message on get ready. And um, a lot of that I just spoke about, get ready, the spirit of Elijah is moving. And for the unveiling, and what does that mean? And um, I just want to say uh, one thing, that that word is going further and further, deeper and deeper of what that unveiling means. And... Um, it will mean something different for each one of us. But I be, believe it's part of the preparation uh, for the prophetic in each one of us. And um, I would probably even be so bold as to say there may be things unveiled on an international level that we will need to have discernment and understanding of in the days ahead. I don't know where all that is going, but I do want us to be prepared. And I do, I want us to be prepared in a mature way, not in a, um, in a way that causes people to run in fear and get all hyped up over something. But get ready. And what is God unveiling? And I want to just spend a moment on that. They, there's an unveiling, I believe, on for all of us, and I say this very tenderly, that we're going to have some unveiling of strongholds within each one of us. We all have it, believe me. But when God unveils it, we're going to be taken out of our comfort zone into the discomfort zone <laughs> because he's going to call us to lean completely on him. And um, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> as I realized that Fred had to stay here to be with the church and I had to go to Korea alone, I didn't want to go. It had my knees knocking. Um, when I went the first time, the Lord said, you're going into the head of the dragon. <laughs> I found out that I actually was there. <laughs> I, you know, my peace uh, my peace didn't leave. I, I went through that just fine. But the second time around, the war <laughs> erupted <laughs> and I thought oh dear God you're sending me into that I don't have my partner with me <laughs> and, and you know I don't know who to t trust here and <laughs> I, oh dear God and I had only one thing to trust and that was the Lord <clears throat> and it exposed some in, in my own insecurities and yet um and this was the this is where he's taking us all. If that situation comes up to you, take it and trust in the Lord. You know, I, I I got the privilege to speak for an hour during all this thing, and it was right in the middle of a three day water fast, no food except water. And uh, I was fine. It was a, a glorious. It was a, an amazing experience. But I got to, up to speak, and I was faint. I thought I was going to lose it. And I said, God, you are going to have to take me through this. I, I can't faint in front of all these people. <laughs> but he did. And uh, 
I listened to what I said. I can't even remember what I said, all of it, but it was one of the strongest messages I've ever given. <laughs> so the Lord brings you through um, this stuff, but he will unveil your insecurities. He will unveil the things that he has a father's heart over in you. And I'm asking all of you to please press into that because he's preparing us for what is to come. Does that make sense? Yeah, so what you're doing is you're you're part of what you're doing, Sue, is you're calling us to repentance of the things yeah. that we that we need to what we need to repent of. This is individual now, this is the end time call. But part of preparing for the end time call is to is to get ready in our in our own hearts and to repent of the things that we know that are not uh off track that, that are off track and that are not right. And yeah. it could be sin issues. Uh uh, it could also be that um that he's calling us to focus uh like never before and he's mm -hmm. and he's calling us to um really be careful of our time how are we how are and i'm very aware of that these days how are we spending our time and are we doing are we spending time doing things that are needless or may uh, get us off focus for where he wants us i just believe as watchmen he wants us to have laser sharp focus as to what's as to what's going on, and uh, it's not it's not it's not especially as leaders, it's not a calling for everybody. It's it's a it's a difficult call. Let's just acknowledge this offhand. We're not just saying, oh yes, you know, join the watch because it's just uh, you know it's so easy, and we're trying to build up numbers. We're 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 not. We we don't want to have people on the watch who are not going to take it seriously, and uh, and we have a. We do have a company of people who are taking this very seriously, and we deeply, deeply appreciate that. And we we are we are building each other up. We are uh, it's iron sharpening iron, and we are spurring one another on towards love and good deeds. It's, <laughs> and we need to just take that up to the next level. I believe this year. And we'll we'll pray about this in just a minute. But I believe this is the Elijah preparation. Elijah was fearless. He comes out of nowhere and, and confronts Ahab. And tells them you're going to have a drought. <laughs> no relationship, no nothing. <laughs> it just says that he was fearless, but he had the word of the Lord. And um, if you have the word of the Lord, people are going to listen. So that's this is a, a preparation that I, I invite us all into, and ask God, what are the strongholds in my heart? And you know, He's exposed it to me, and. Um, I'm I'm honest before you what I just went through. <laughs> so, but I believe um, I came out stronger. I came out a different person, and uh, I don't know where it's all taking taking me. I don't know where it's all taking you. But God is is preparing an Elijah company, and um, we will have the word of the Lord. We will speak it out, and God will be there to uh, speed the word forward. Um, well, and, and and Sue, and again, I, I just need to—I don't want to belabor this point, but every time that we, every time that we take a risk and and go into a place that's uncomfortable for us, that we know that God is taking us, and we depend on Him, it strengthens us. It strengthens us in Him, and that's mm -hmm. just that's just so important that we do that and that we not hold back. Yeah, exactly. Well, the other big thing I think that is going to start getting unveiled our national strongholds. <clears throat> and we are already are witnessing some of that in America with Elon Musk taking over uh, Twitter and unveiling this whole demonic stronghold uh, uh, of forces of communication and media. And um, it was a shock to us all, but we've known something that's been underneath the media that's been bending the, the, the mindset of the nations. And uh, it's still there. I think that there will be some more exposure as we take on more of an Elijah anointing. Um, and believe me, I'm, I'm not talking about the masses. I'm talking about the remnant. <clears throat> God will always use a remnant. Yes, there, there may be millions of intercessors, you know, for certain things, 
but this remnant is being called together for uh, as a uh, as an Elijah company that will speak truth into the atmosphere and see what God will do when these devastations come. They're gonna they're coming and they're coming in stronger and stronger birth pains. We as watchmen must be be able to get above the din that we see above the the war uh, above the chaos and decree the word of the Lord, the order of the Lord, um, and uh, have eyes to see it and ears to hear it and not be dismayed by what comes before our eyes. Uh, last week, we got the word that a six-year-old took out a gun and shot his teacher in school. And I'm before the Lord and say, God, how can it get much worse? Intervene. We need divine intervention. The whole earth is being prepared now. There is no war. There's no legislation. There's no governmental shift. There's no person. There's no legislation that can uh, repair the injustices today. He's preparing the earth for a divine intervention. And he's preparing a company that will prepare the way for his return. Understand that no matter what we see, there's divine uh, permission behind it. Because God is giving us orders in the court. And that's why these watches are so valuable. And I pray for everyone who's gotten weary, we've gotten weary, to be renewed in their strength. Renewed in vision, renewed in purpose of why we are doing this. Is the reason we're landing on these morning and evening sacrifice is that we must declare the word of the Lord in a world that's increasingly caught in chaos. That's our call. Because there will come a day where there will be order in the court. And the foot of Jesus will come upon the earth. The spirit of Elijah is run, is emerging, just as Malachi spoke. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord, the spirit of Elijah will come, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers, lest he strike the earth with a curse. And then there was 400 years of silence. And it was broken by a cry from a baby in a lost and forgotten manger. I wonder who felt the shift. Shepherds did, and God used the most unlikely of people to spread the word. And all of us are the most unlikely of people. But will we feel the shift? I think we are. You wouldn't be on this call. So the spirit of Elijah is coming to pronounce and to prepare the way. And we all have it. Fear not, for he is with us. Be of good cheer. So that's the season that I believe we're in. It's going to be a, a, a test for all of us. Um, but I'm here to say, I don't want to see any of us be knocked off the wall. And I pray that we all allow God to reshape us, reform us on the inside out. I had a lesson in trusting in the Lord last week. And uh, I can't say that I was perfect in it. But I can say I'm different in it. And we all, you know, we all see in part and we prophesy in part. But uh, I want to just say that season upon us is to have a remolding season, a reshaping season. Let us be Elijah and Tishbe, where God in the secret place formed him and shaped him and, you know, uh, caused him to have a degree <clears throat> before God. And 
um, will be the ones that appear out of nowhere with the word of the Lord. And I think in some ways, Fred, you and I were those people yesterday with the young adults. They were like, you know, <laughs> but they were interested. The door opened and they were interested. So we're going to pray for the pray for that door opening. And I pray for every one of us to find that Elisha next to us and bring them into the watch this year. So let's, let's gonna um, pray it in. Yeah. So let's, um, let's just shift now in the time that we have left. I, I would really like to shift into prayer for uh, just for this, that we would have an understanding of, of uh, an increased understanding. You know, we know in part, we prophesy in part, none of us has the, the whole answer, but as we seek the Lord together, we need to seek him for what, what's he, how is he calling us to prepare for the end times? So we just need to, I just believe we need to, um, to uh, pray into that. And uh, um, so again, let's have just, uh, just brief uh, prayers. Um, and uh, you can raise your hand electronically. I just want to start off. Um, Hannah, would you like to just open us up for this? Just uh, be the first one to pray and then We'll just uh, we'll recognize the people as they raise their hands. Oh, Abba, most high God, ancient of days. We come before you, Lord, because we are well aware there is a major shift happening right now. And the thing I'm picking up this morning, Lord, is there is a shift we've never experienced before where you're not going to wait till the end of Elijah's ministry to pass a mantle to Elisha. They're going to share it. We are to cover. We're to spread out our wings as eagles over the Elisha's. Elisha's, you take us to, Lord, and we are to mentor them, not just disciple them. They need to see in our character and in our lives that we are clean all the way through, Father. We need to be people who absolutely demonstrate the opposite of counterfeit reality at a level that has not been seen before in the body of messiah father this is what you're calling out this is why so many of us are going through an olive press or a, a grape crushing or a threshing floor experience father is because you are intently purposeful in this character means everything to you now and so we're asking abba we're asking and we're pleading with you Keep working on us. Do the deep work. Our spirits are screaming out yes. And I don't care if our souls say no. Don't listen. Don't listen. We're, we're spirit people underneath those screaming out, ouch, 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 I can't take this, is a spirit saying, I'm all in. I'm all in. Abba, hear our cry as a global community. We want this. We're in for this. And we're leaning into you, Lord. Do the work, do the work, Abba, to Yeshua's honor and glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Hannah. Lena, go ahead. Yeah, Lord, we declare it's time for the revelation of the mature sons, Lord. Um, and it's time that we're not watching for who is um, listening and whose hearts are open, but we're listening to you, Holy Spirit. We want to be led by you and you will call us to speak when we know no one is listening. Um, um, you will call us to speak um, your word in your time and with your heart. No arrogance, no, um, uh, no like personal angst, uh, but that we would um, know your heart um, and, and speak it, Lord. Uh, Father, we, we ask that even today, uh, we know that you are preparing us, Lord, that today our spirit would hear when you're calling us in, into an uncomfortable, inconvenient, um, um, you know, against our self-preservation um, situations, Father, and that we would uh, uh, agree and walk it out. Um, um, yeah, thank you, Father. Amen. So good. Thank you, Lena. Uh, Amy, go ahead. Um, reading here after Elijah <clears throat> made the confrontation, it said in uh, chapter 18, verse 30, Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. And all the people came near. 
to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. He took 12 stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came saying, Israel shall be your name. Father, help us to have the courage to confront and to do what you called us. But then as we're doing this, we are raising up and repairing the altar of the Lord with the stones of the sons of Israel. This is the younger generation, but he had to display the character of God. Help us to have the courage and the willingness to spend time with you, to be nourished by you, to be strengthened by you, and then to turn and teach our younger generation. I know I've been burdened about my own children and grandchildren and challenging them and teaching them and thought, you know, what about the missionary stories? Lord, give us things to do to share with these children and grandchildren that you are God Almighty, that we are repairing the altar of the Lord, that you are worthy and that you're worthy of us laying our lives down for you. And that because of what you've done in our lives, there's going to be a shift from Jacob to the name Israel. And we thank you for the shift that you're doing, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amy, what was the, um, give us again the, the address on the, the scripture that you were quoting from. I'm sorry. It was 1 Kings 18, 30 through uh, 31. 18, 30 to 31. Thank you. And uh, Amy, you have, um, I just want to point out that you have a certain uh, authority to speak into this into the next generation because partly partly your job is that you are a teacher uh, teaching uh, students uh, nur- and particularly in the area of field of nursing but you are you're you're with all the time you're with um, the next generation so um, uh, maybe you could just just pray for us that we will find that God will open the doors in our individual you know, ministries, not just in the global watch in general, but the, in the in, in our lives and in our ministries, that the Lord will open the doors to the next generation. And it may be in some unusual ways. We just, we have to be purposeful about it. We have to be looking for it, but just, just pray for us as a, as a group, would you? And I, I would really appreciate that. Father, I, I do just lift up every person here and even people who will listen to this later and even people that they will talk to later, and that you would increase, one, the burden, that we would turn aside. Moses had to turn aside, and then God spoke to him. We need to turn aside, help every person here to turn aside and see the burning bush. You are wanting to ignite us as burning bushes so that we might ignite the next generation to become burning bushes. We thank you, Lord, that any old bush will do. We thank you, Father, that you will give us eyes to see the potential, that we will see every individual we come across, whether it's our children, our grandchildren, or those who are working. For me, it's in healthcare, it's in academia, it may be in business. My son is called in leadership, in business, in community, Uh, 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 music. If you are called in music, whatever area God has called you, you are going to come in contact with the younger generation. So we ask God that you would increase the burden and help us to see our place, to lift them up before you, to engage in intercession for them, but also to come along as mentors and guides. You will give us the wisdom. You said, I will go with you. I will be with you. When you told the children of Israel they were coming down into Egypt, you already told them, I'm going to be with you. I am going to tabernacle with you. That's what that word, the outstretched arm, when he sent Moses, that word means to pitch a tent. God said, I'm going to pitch a tent. Help us to pitch a tent and recognize that we are bringing in the presence of God to these young people. So I just want to speak that to every person on this call in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, you guys, we're getting down towards the end of the hour, so we have four people with their hands raised. So we're gonna we're gonna stop after Molly and and go back to Susan. So we will. So every every one of you, all the four there, uh, you know, give your uh, uh, prayer and uh, 
and then we'll get we'll go back to Susan. So go ahead, Julie. Yeah, last week um, when I was uh, just as I was come, becoming awake, I heard the Lord say an abundance of rain. And, you know, just researching that, you know, the faith, I just want to pray for faith, you know, and, and he's been highlighting in Luke 18, I think it's eight for me too. When the son of man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Yep. And so I just want to pray for faith. Go ahead for us as we listen, because it took three years, you know, it took some time before that rain came. And so, Father, I do. I just want to lift each and every one of us for faith to arise. Father, and for where we do not believe you will help our unbelief. Father, in the words that you are saying to us. Father, that we have, will have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to understand what the spirit of the Lord is saying. And walk out in the faith of what we've heard. May faith arise on this watch. And we just thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Julie. Go ahead, Virginia. Uh, you know, Jesus warned us of what was going to happen in two parables. The first one was about the narrow way, which is going to get narrower. And the other one was about the, the house built on the rock. And only the house built on the rock stood the storm, withstood the storms. But there were two particular words the Lord is speaking to me, and one is to be very watchful against pride. The pride is so subtle. Pride is so subtle. And the other one is that the Lord gives each of us a level of spiritual authority, and if we can discern that and and function in that, then we can go forward in great strength. So I pray that each one of us will rise into the level of spiritual authority that the Lord has laid upon us and that we will go forward together, exercising that in the, in the power and humility of the Holy Spirit. Because when Elijah walked into the palace, he just walked in and that spiritual authority was on him. The people just fell back. And this is what the Lord is beginning to do in these days. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead, Melody. Yeah. Um, Elijah means Jehovah is my God. So my prayer for us, Lord, is that we would be those who know you, who truly know you, and that we uh, would be the people that Daniel speaks of in Daniel 1132, but the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Lord, we, we just thank you for Elijah's example. When he built the altar, he built it in the name of the Lord. May we know you, Lord, that we can stand strong in you in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Great. Uh, Fred, it's, it's Esther, can I just say something? You know, where Elijah came from, you know, I don't know if in Hebrew it said the whore on the hill, you know, in Gilad, Yavesh Gilad, when when they're in judges. So he, I just want to say, Susan, I mean, they wanted the, uh, to rape the man that came to the hill, you know, when he took his uh, concubine back from her father. Gilad, you know, Yavesh Gilad, it's the same area they came. And Susan, it's so much the, the, the generation that now, you know, like you said, the broken generation. He came from a broken place, El, uh, uh, Eliyahu, Elijah, came from a broken place, and God used him. Amen. Thank you, Esther. All right, uh, Molly, go ahead, and we're going to go back to Sue. Yeah, um, from the time um, you've been speaking, this has been coming strongly to me from uh, Second Kings, Second. Um, and as they were crossing, Elijah said to Elisha, ask for something and I will do it because, before I'm taken away from you. And Elisha said, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And um, then as they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind to heaven. Elisha was watching and crying. My father, my father, 
the chariot of Israel and its horsemen, and he did not see him again. Then he grabbed his own clothes and tore them into pieces. He picked up the robe of Elijah that fell from him, and he returned and stood on the bank of Jordan. And he took the robe of Elijah that fell from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, it parted from one side to the other, and Elisha crossed over. Father, I want to decree and declare in this hour that there is a there is a transition, there is an impartation of a double portion of the spirit of Elijah over this generation, over us as your people. And Lord God, even, even as Elijah was taken by the chariots, there was that was a, a as a prophetic. Uh, expression father the mantle was given to him the mantle he said if you see me going you will receive my mantle so father there was a, a looking into for watching like as watchmen looking into lord this this transfer this coming forth and even as prophet chuck pierce has spoken about an elisha company rising up as well father god a double portion is coming over your people and also father that he called him a father, my father, my father. So there was a, an honor and an honor given Father God. And there, as a generation, as two generation of prophets coming and Lord God and a transition and Lord God, the power, the power of God moved. And, and when he said, where is the Lord God of Elijah and struck the waters, there was a partitioning of the waters. So Father, I declare and proclaim, Lord, miracles, signs and wonders being released in this hour as we receive this mantle, we receive the power of God upon this journey, upon this uh, this. Uh, Pray mountain, Lord, that we're going to Mount Carmel. There will be a double portion. There will be mighty miracles and moves of God. We prophesy and declare that in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Molly. All right, Susan Rao, we're going to go back to you. Well, first of all, thank you all for um, your continuing pressing in and being part of the wall. May God bless you and prosper you in the ways that you should go. I pray, Father, that each one of us for that divine encounter that will help uh, break open our hearts, expand our spirits um, for the hour and the times ahead. Uh, I did want to just plug in this book, <laughs> Remnant Rising, A Watchman Call to Prepare the Way. Um, it's on Amazon, but I go through the individual corporate and the end time call in this in greater detail. And I also the last chapter is on Matthew 24, um, all the things that Jesus talked about and what we're seeing today. But it's a book that I, I feel is foundational for what we're doing in the in the watch and certainly can help help you. I hope it helped you and spur you on uh, as we go forward this year. But anyway, thank you all for your uh, uh, preparation or participation last week in helping Fred and I through a very challenging week, a glorious week, but it was, it had, um, it, it, we needed you to be there, <laughs> let's put it that, that way, and that's the way it should work, the Lord said, this is the machine that's working, so I'm, <laughs> I'm very thankful for that, um, the rest of this week, there's going to be special guests, most of the, um, most all of the calls that are really, uh, handpicked for the hour that we're in. The next call is an, a modern day Elijah. Um, Manny Carrizales is a, a voice from here in Bakersfield. He's a, he is a man that has a history of uh, being in the gangs and drugs, burned out his kidneys on drugs and he's on dialysis now. But his heart is totally committed to the Lord and he's reaching the youth like by the thousands. And he's the only man I know that can put all of the leaders of the Bloods and the Crips gangs together around the table and talk. Um, so he's, this is going to be a, uh, I didn't encourage and invite you to listen into this and what this man is doing. And uh, He's now being invited into secular schools to do, uh, um, not what do you call it, uh, Fred? 
do um, assemblies. The, assemblies, the, the yeah. School officials are inviting him in, and he's able to um, to uh, talk about things and actually to declare the gospel right in the in the uh, governmental schools in the in our public schools, which is quite uh, amazing. Yeah, he's a, <clears throat> he's a modern day Elijah. Yeah, yeah, good. So, all right. So, um, thank you all again. We just thank you all for really to for really pressing in on this. And I, and I know we all are. I can just feel it. And uh, and we're we're um, we really want to be those that are bring people's attention, uh, the people that we interact with, to the end times, to the to the fact that we are on a timeline, and that timeline is accelerating. And how important it is to get things to get right with the Lord during this time. So, um, and this includes people in the church. This is not just you know unbelievers. This is people in the church as well. To wake up. So, uh, Margaret, Greg, would you uh, please close us off in prayer? Just unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Lord, we want to thank you, Father, for this message today. Thank you for Susan, Lord God. Thank you for Fred. Thank you for each and every one on the wall, Lord. Help us to keep strong, Lord. Help us to help one another, to bring each other up. When the tough gets going, Lord, the word says, uh, you know, the going gets tough. The dude, when the tough get, when the, oh Lord, when, when the going amen. gets tough, the tough get going. Amen. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> so, Father, we thank you that um, you have uh, chosen us, not because we deserve it, Lord, but you have chosen us, Lord God. So we we don't want to uh, miss it, Lord God. So help us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, each and every one of us today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Everybody unmute yourselves, wave to each other. Amen. Yeah, Blessings, the the everybody. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Bless you all. Thank you, Sue. Bless you. Love you. Bless Sue. Bye, Mom. 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 Bye, Mom.